What all? This is Motzei Shabbat, Parshat Naso, this year 5,775. This, uh, this week we read about the Nazir, and uh, one of the ideas behind the Nazir, without going into it um, too much, is his sense of the Nazar senses that there's something wrong in himself, in the way he, the society is is influencing him, and he pulls back and enters into a into a private experience, a uh, spiritual experience, and um, one of the uh, one one of the ideas that that uh, the the nazir stimulates for us is what how do we deal with the influences of the outside society? I was listening to an interesting lecture by uh, Rabbi Dr. Aaron Rakefet Rothkoff, um, in which he's discussing the issue of uh, scandals in the Orthodox community and. Um, one of the elements that he discusses is the how the outside world influences and even corrodes the character of the Orthodox community. And uh, he said, the Western world eats away at us. What is Western civilization? Ultimately, man worships himself, not God. You are the arbiter. You decide. You dictate. Your standards is what counts. That's the essence of the Western society. And one of the, one of the things that uh, Rav Soloveitchik of blessed memory emphasized without really saying this is what he was doing is to, to clarify the truth of Torah in such a way that you become very clear about how it stands in contradistinction to Western society. For instance, Rav Soloveitchik pointed out that you know, everybody has his rights in Western society. Western society is about rights. But the Torah, you have rights in, in, in Torah, maybe in, in monetary areas and so, certain other areas, but the Torah is essentially about obligations. Not about schuyos, but about chobos, chiyuvim. That's a, 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 uh, an important idea to have in mind. Um, we talked earlier today about the idea in Western society, it's my body. It's my body, and I do with what I want. But the Torah is teaching us, God says, it's not your body, it's my body. And I'll tell you what you can put into it, I'll tell you wh what you can eat, where you can go, what you can do on what day of the week with this body, what you can, if you can put a tattoo on this body, who you could marry, so this is this this is a completely different mindset from the Western world, and whereas in let's say in the 1950s when there was a, still a more uh, religious Christian influence in American society, you know the leave it, leave it to Beaver era, um, Father knows best. You know these types of television shows that you could actually leave your kids who watch the television and it wasn't going to destroy their neshama. Um, the, um, in that world, you didn't see as big a distinction between the Jewish values and the Western values. But as time has gone on, the, this distinction is becoming more and more stark and more and more threatening to the Jewish world. And if you don't think about it, and you don't, you know, do borer on it. You don't clarify it. It it'll eat us up. It'll eat us up because it'll just we absorb. If you walk down the street, you're affected by the advertisements. 
I'm not saying you should look at them. But it's impossible to go out into the world or to hold even a telephone in your hand or to, to buy the clothing that, it, that, that, that we wear and not be affected to walk into the structures and the, the buildings that are built. All of these things carry messages uh, to us, not least of which is the tremendous emphasis that's put on physical, gashmius types of things. That's the, the Western society is so focused on the things that 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 we have, not the necessarily the person that we become. Uh, not that you can't use all of these things, because like you have in this week's parsha, the kohen. The the kohenim give the bracha yivarecha Hashem v'yishmarecha Hashem and yivarecha Rashi says you should be rich. So Hashem thinks that being wealthy is a good thing. But you have to know how to use it. So am I using it for my own self? For my own selfish reasons? Uh, am I using it to protect myself from God? You know, I have all the insurances and I have all the money in the bank and I have all the, the, the gadgets that I need. I got God over a barrel. I don't have to worry about God's going to bother me now. You know? Or whatever other calculation a person has in his head and his heart. Or do we say, whatever God is giving me, God is giving me in order to use it, to serve him, to sanctify the world, to reveal the godliness in the world. And uh, Rabbi Krohn at Shal Shudas mentioned in Rabbi Golden's book, uh, from Engel, Rabbi Shmuel Gold from Englewood, they contrast the Nazir and the Kohen, uh, who have very similar areas of halacha about hair, about drinking wine, about coming in contact with the dead. Different, different nuances for each one, but the idea, though, that the Kohen, the Kohen is different from the Nazir. The Nazir withdraws himself from society. The Kohen has to maintain a distinct identity in order to serve society. And here we have another I, um, uh, uh, idea in which Western society is losing this value. You know, many years ago, John F. Kennedy said, ask not what y your country can do for you, but what can you do for your country? This type of idealistic talk is rare to hear nowadays. It's very rare. Because it is. It's what about, what can my country do for me? What am I entitled to? And what, you know, what benefits do I get? And, uh, and et cetera, et cetera. It's not about what can I do for my country. Um, and, and, uh, and even, let's say, the way the Western world will look at the Kohen, for instance. The you know, a, a Kohen, oh, wow, he gets to stand up on the stage and he gets to, you know, be the leader or like the Chazan in Shul. You know, he gets to, to lead the davening. So he's somehow, he's special. He's somehow better than the rest of us. So I want to be like that. So I, I want to I be the Chazan. I want to, to, uh, to be the Kohen. So... That's born out of a Western mentality, as opposed to seeing that each of these per persons that are in the public view in, in the Jewish world are servants, are, pub are public servants. When the, when the princes bring their offerings, so the Nachshon ben Aminadab, the first one, is praised as an as a nasi. It's, it's that he's, his, his, the way the Torah constructs it, it teaches us that it's out of his humility that he is, uh, is chosen to be the first one. Not out of his fame and his power, but out of his humility. Um, these, these are all, you know, concepts which are not emphasized or actually their opposites are emphasized in the Western culture. And it behooves us to 
examine carefully what what can we safely take from the Western culture because there there are certain things, especially if they're um, there there can be useful. They can sometimes even shed light on Torah. You know, uh, probably the master of the generation in, in this regard would be Rabbi Aaron Lichtenstein of blessed memory. But he was, he, he, he examined everything from the Torah perspective. He scrutinized and was very critical of, of Western society. It, with, 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 the, with the focus from Torah and pure faith in Hashem. And every Jew is a Kohen. Every Jew has a mission. Every, every Jew has, is a servant to the Jewish people and ultimately to the world. And you never know how you can affect other people through the, the, by, by keep, by, certainly by living an ethical life. You have a tremendous influence on on the people around you, especially Jews who are involved in contact with the outer world, in business, in corporations, in the, in, in, in the world at large. But even a person who sits and learns Torah all day, he still walks out into the streets and he goes on the bus, he travels, how he conducts himself, people watch, people are watching. And a single person can have a tremendous effect. Uh, Nava Yoshishvili um, sent out a, a story uh, told by one of the uh, the uh, leaders in Kirov Rehokim in outreach today. And he writes that when he was about 20 years old, he was growing up in Tel Aviv, a secular student, completely secular, and he was he was uh, walking on uh, on Dizengoff, uh one day, and everything changed for him. What happened? You know, Dizengoff is like Times Square, and um, all of these billboards and, and signs, and it, it's like it's hard not to hard not to look, and he sees. Um, you know, it, it, it didn't, didn't make an impression on him because he sees it all the time, he says. But suddenly he sees it's a hot summer day and there's a guy walking down the street in a suit and a black hat and he's, he's, he's walking towards, towards me, we're walking opp uh, opposite directions and I can see, I'm watching him and I see that he's doing everything that he can not to look at the advertisements, which are, uh, which generally are always advertising something very physical, and very often something sexually inappropriate as well. So he, said, he said to himself, I couldn't understand, why is this guy doing this? And why, why is he not looking? And why is he working so hard not not to look. And who, who cares if he looks or not? And who would know if he looks? Why is he not looking? So it bothered, he says, it bothered me all night. And the next day I went to the library and I looked up, uh, I wanted to learn about Judaism. What is this guy all about? And when, when a Jew wants something, Hashem helps. I took off from the shelf a book. It was called the Sefer Hachinuch. It's the book of education. And that's the book that lists all 613 mitzvahs. So he says they open the book. And what does it open up to? To the mitzvah that we read in the Shema. Below tatur, he opens up right to the, to the mitzvah that, that says, don't follow after your heart and after your eyes that cause you to stray. So he was, um, so he would, so he said he, he had a very great thirst and he was, 
he he was he was reading more and more until finally he decided he's got to go to yeshiva. And that's what he did, and now many years later, he's taught many other Jews. He's brought many other Jews back to Torah, and imagine after 120 years. This guy who was walking on the street in Dizengoff is going to come up to heaven and they're going to show him all the people that he brought back to Torah. And he's going to say, what are you talking about? I didn't, I didn't do anything. I never got involved in that. I did X, Y, Z. I never got involved in, in that. And they'll show him the, at least one person that he influenced on the street that then had influence on on so many more. So Nava Yoshev really concludes the story. Realize that you know that, or he said, they'll tell this guy, you made a Kiddush Hashem privately. You sanctified Hashem's name, the way you live. You had, you struggled with are you going to look or you're not going to look, and and what you did for yourself had an influence on others. And in this sense, the Nazir is also not just for himself; he also has an influence on others. Nazir is very complex for another discussion, and th- and so a person can go about his daily life. He doesn't have to be big and famous, and yet he can have a tremendous impact. You ne- you ne- and you never know. Or as someone once said, you might be the only Bible someone else ever reads. So, Bezrat Hashem, Hashem should bless us to think clearly about what we believe, to act in accordance with Hashem's will and to stand up to the struggle, the milchemet ha-yetzer, the, the battle with, with the urges and inclinations that pull us in one direction or another and to stay on the path that Hashem gives us. Shavuot Tov. Shavuot Tov.